Now, for years, they have been trying to come up with a nice, concise definition of what GIS is. Um, it's pretty, uh, pretty expansive, uh, to tell you the truth. But somebody just give it a shot here. Um, GIS links locational and attribute information and enables a person to visualize patterns, relationships, and trends. This process gives an entirely new perspective to data analysis that cannot be easily seen in just a table or list format or on just a paper map. Exploring data using GIS turns data into information into knowledge. Consider that GIS allows us to conduct spatial analysis faster, better, and cheaper now than in Dr. Snow's day. He only had to compare two competing theories. Um, you know, what if both of those theories were wrong, okay? Uh, what if he wanted to, or needed to, analyze, uh, analyze rather, uh, all aspects of the victim's lives, okay? How close did they live to various factories? Where did they get their meats? Fruits, vegetables, bread? Where did they go to school? Where did they go to work or church? What were their mattresses made of? How many people lived in their homes? What kind of wood did they burn for fires? What kind of oil did they use in their lamps? What materials were their clothes made out of? The list of possible questions is uh, almost endless. Answering all those questions and determining if they were at all related to the cholera outbreak in a timely manner would have been an impossible task for Dr. Snow. Uh, lucky for him, he, had the, he was on the right track. Um, but today we've got GIS and, uh, and with GIS we, we can make those uh, conclusions, we can analyze uh, those factors uh, much quicker. Okay, so GIS um, not only is it great software and it contains or you can use uh, really some powerful information, data and maps um, but there are other things you need to consider, okay? Um, five components of GIS, as you see on this slide. Um, you have hardware, software, data, methods, and people, okay? Sorry to read the slide, but in case maybe you're listening on your MP3 player, it might be useful. Hardware, the computer, peripherals, and sometimes servers on which the GIS operates. Software, uh, the software provides the functions and tools required to store, analyze, and display data. Data is stored as vector, raster, or attribute data, and we'll get into more of that in a little bit. Methods are the guidelines, specifications, standards, uh, and procedures for collecting and analyzing data and applying GIS. And of course, people. Okay, GIS needs people to ask the questions, choose, collect, and analyze the data, and interpret the results. Um, I'll probably get into it, you know, down the road, but GIS is uh, one of those professions that really rely on people, okay? When you are needing information, chances are somebody's already collected the data for it, um, and you share data, okay? And not only do you share data, but you share methods that you use uh, in order to analyze that data or to um, make tools for the software, which we're not going to get into. Um, but people really is key um, so don't don't snub that you know make sure that you do network with other people that can help you um, because you're eventually going to have data that can help them they're eventually going to have data that can help you so you know it's give and take in this field now here we have a slide showing a complete GIS as I call it uh, visualization GIS as a tool to display spatial data as a map then you have database management which GIS is used to store and organize spatial data. And then there's spatial analysis, when GIS is used as a tool to analyze and interpret spatial data. Um, let me see if I can break this down maybe in another way. I think this picture shows it pretty well with those layers there. Um, GIS begins with layers of geographic representations. Okay, um, In this graphic, you see land use, which would be like, um, you know, is this piece of land used as a home or is it used as a field uh, as a business is that a stream going through there what's what's the land being used for um, then the next one down is streets okay like road center lines um, then you have districts in this particular case be like school district or 
political districts, stuff like that. Then you have parcels. Okay. Um, now you may be familiar with the uh, transparency sheets. Um, they're like the little sheets of plastic that you would print a picture on, um, and usually they're laid on an overhead projector. I um, I hope I'm not dating myself. Um, I I hope you guys uh, remember what those are. Um, those are what was popular before the PowerPoints uh, became the norm. But imagine a stack of these transparent sheets, um, and each one containing a particular geographical, I'll say a geographical theme. Okay, One shows all the rivers in a county, another the streets, another the property lines, so on. Um, but then you add one more layer, um, which is called the base layer. Um, this might contain townships, uh, or township boundaries, rather, um, or maybe even just county lines or the county area. Now, once you arrange these layers in the GIS uh, with the base layer on the bottom, the layers line up to create a new map. Uh, layers can be added or removed, turned on and off, um, to demonstrate different data or to sh to reveal or uh, well, yeah, reveal this particular layer. Or if you take that layer away, it'll reveal other information. Um, it's very interactive. Uh, in GIS, each feature in each layer layer carries data. Okay, so a feature maybe being a street segment or a parcel uh, carries data with it um, that is specific to that feature, and it's stored in tabular form um, in a, in the attribute tables. And you're gonna begin to come to know what an attribute table is, know them, love them, get used to them. Uh, but these really are the building blocks of GIS.